Okay, so we've done all our checking and we're happy with our design and we're ready to make the DXF or DWG file. So first we need to make a regular SOLIDWORKS drawing file and then we'll export that. So new drawing and I find the C scale tends to work well. It's about the right size. Okay, now we're ready to insert the parts. You see they're all here. I tend to find it's more convenient to insert them from this control, the view palette. And that's because in the view palette, I'll start with the bottom, it shows you the views um, right away, so you don't have to guess. Uh, the other way you kind of have to guess. So let's pull a top in, or the top view of the bottom. Okay, and the first thing we want to check is the scale. So that's over here. You want to make sure it's one to one. If it's not, then just simply click that and make it one-to-one. -one. Okay, and uh, that view is good. Now let's do, let's see, it doesn't really matter what order you do here. How about the sides? So I could pull in one of them. I could also pull in another, or I could simply mirror this in ProjectCAD or AutoCAD later on. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what you choose to do. Since my left and right sides are the same, um, I'll just take in the other view. So drag that one in. And we just keep going here. Uh, take all your parts in. So the front. And see, it's of course going to align it. It only lets you place it in certain uh, locations. We'll have more freedom to move them around in ProjectCAD. That's the front. Um, I don't have to do a back because I could do that in ProjectCAD. Yeah, but I do need a top. Okay. Now, uh, depending on the kind of design you did, you might get some of these center marks. See how they're center line there? Um, you can simply click that and delete it. Well, obviously, we don't want to laser cut that. Now, you see that it's not showing me the hidden stem for this. So I can change the display style to make it show. That would be these controls right here. See, we're under this kind of a, a no, not showing the hidden lines. Here's hidden lines as dotted. I'd rather have them as all solid. So there it's showing it. Uh, so if you have your squares here, then this would be good to check the wireframe so that the square shows and then we'll pull them out of the drawing later. So uh, as soon as you have all of your parts on, uh, if you have a different back then obviously you would need one more part, uh, then we're ready to export this. So that's under File and it's under Save As. So we're saving it not as a DRW file, that's a SOLIDWORKS file. We're saving it as either a DXF or a DWG, and it doesn't really matter which you pick. Okay, uh, it is good to click on the options. Check the uh, scale output one to one enable, and uh, that doesn't really matter whether that's enabled or not. The version doesn't matter a whole lot either. Uh, 2000 to 2002 is just fine, and all of the others are fine as well. Okay, so we'll save this as, let's give it a better name here. So this is a laser cut box. Okay, and now we're ready to open that in ProjectCAD. So here it is in ProjectCAD, and we need to do a little cleanup and a little arranging. Uh, first thing is let's get rid of the um, drawing perimeter. We certainly don't need or want to laser cut that. Okay, now let's zoom in and uh, all of our lines that we want to be cut we'd like to make those red. So I'm going to make everything red and then if, if I want to change something to an etch line I'll do that now. Now I want to be a little careful with these. So let's see, I would like to show where the stem needs to go. So I'm going to take both of these first because those are going to be distinct parts. Cop I'm copying those and I'm going to paste those over here and then I'm going to move this part out of the way. Whoop. 
didn't want to do that. I forgot to unselect the middle. Okay, so I'm going to move that. Now I have a stem part. Oh, let's delete that. Uh, I have a stem part and a handle. And this I don't want to show at all. So, oh, and there's two of them. Uh, you may find that there are double lines and um, when, it exp when SolidWorks exported things, it might give a double line for certain features. Like when I click on this and I del I'm hitting delete and there's one still there. And that's because there's two of those lines, probably because it's a part. If I delete a third, second time, it's gone. Now I'm control z to undo to get it back. But I'm gonna make this white because that would be a helpful etch line. That'll show me where to glue the stem. Uh, if you wanted to make this whole thing etch, you certainly could, right? We could just select that and make it white at this point. Uh, you can white at that point, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave it as a cut, so Control Z. All right, now we need to arrange and we need to make sure all of our parts are here. So, uh, let's see, I want an efficient layout so it doesn't take a lot of wood. So I think one thing I'll do is move this one so it's lined up with that one. Okay, that's already a little more efficient. Um, I think I'm going to take this piece and move it a little closer. Oh, see, I grabbed some things I shouldn't have. So it helped pays to select carefully. So move that a little closer. Uh, if you wanted to get uh, extra fancy, you could make this set of lines overlap on that set of lines, and uh, that would save a little cutting time. Let me move these out of the way for now, so we can do some more arranging. Uh, I know I'm going to need another one of those, so I'm going to move the lid out of the way temporarily. And let's copy this. So control C to copy and control V to paste. And it notice it's there. It's not pasted until I click. So I put it where I think it should go. Uh, reasonably close. It probably you probably don't want to get too close. If you if I pasted that right on that corner, um, you'll get some burning that will um, be reflected in the neighboring part. So a small distance is helpful. And now I'd like to find a way to range these two and this so that I take up the least amount of wood. So let's see, here's one thought. I could do that sideways and I could do both of these over here. That's not too bad. And then the circles can go, oop, I didn't. So uh, what happened there was a feature of all these AutoCADs where it uh, snaps to entities. So you see that little e-snap button. And if I was paying more attention when I did that, when I drag this over, I accidentally hit the mouse, there we go. Um, see that little yellow triangle? If a, If it, appears like that or that one, it's going to snap the object to that yellow, yellow triangle. So if I let go here, the red lines will overlap, just like they did there. So in order for that to not happen, uh, either don't have those yellow triangles show up or unclick the e-snap. Now you can get as close as you want and you won't get that snap feature. Okay, so to save wood, I could um, possibly save a little wood for another project there. Not that wood's terribly expensive. It's not. Um, but why waste it if we don't need to? Uh, the little parts like this tend to get lost. Uh, as you'll see when you use the laser cutter, there's a honeycomb table and they tend to fall through. So I would suggest making, um, if you have room, three of them. And then you're sure to get one. And that's not too bad of a layout. I probably could optimize it more if I played around with orientations. Um, for example, I might try that rotated 90 degrees and then other arrangements of this. Um, but this is a perfectly acceptable layout. A few other things to modify before it goes to the laser. 
first is select all the lines and this is the line width 0.15 millimeters the laser prefers to have all the lines at zero and if they're thick um, it can interpret them differently and um, go into a different mode so it's best just to make them all zero okay if there are any lines that are still left that might be overlapping each other so there's a possibility it might have a spare yep there's two there and two there so I'm hitting delete uh, and there's a nifty command that works in ProjectCAD and AutoCAD it doesn't work in DraftSite not the free version and it's called overkill and it will eliminate all duplicate lines so select entities and it's asking me what kind of control I want I would assume the defaults are fine and now it's searching for uh, throughout the whole drawing and it found du two duplicate lines and it deleted them and I would guess that they were that one and that one or something like that so that's always good to do so the laser doesn't have to work extra hard and it also prevents a little extra burning you if you had the lid design where you had little squares here then obviously we'd want to move those off of the lid or they would etch that pattern in there so I've moved the, those down to a space like this all four of them and just arrange them and make a couple copies of them in case they um, get lost so in summary the steps you want to do here are first uh, um, make everything red that you want to be cut everything white that you want to be etched uh, move things off of the lid in particular that uh, would not make sense to laser cut such as the handle or the small feet make all of the lines zero millimeters wide that's done in this control uh, use the overkill command down here to uh, eliminate any duplicate lines and then you should be ready for laser cutting okay so we want to save this now the laser cutter currently we're using an old version of AutoCAD so it does need to be saved as an old version of um, DFX or DWG so when we go file save as uh, we want to save as 2004 or older and it doesn't matter whether it's DWG or DXF but it has to be 2004 or older so I'm gonna do that and laser cut box DWG and that is ready for laser cutting.